When editing video, one of the tasks that you do over and over again is adding text on the screen. Often it's in the form of a lower third, where you add a location or somebody's name and title at the bottom of the frame to identify them. Because it's something you do over and over again, you can waste time. But by using templates in Premiere Pro, you can save time by using the same template over and over and over again. Let me show you how. It's not that hard. So here we are in Premiere Pro, and I've got a project open, and I want to add a lower third. I'm going to go to Title, New Title, Default Still, and I'm going to give it a name, uh, and I'm going to call it Base Lower Third. And it opens up the standard window. The first thing I want to do is design the bar, and I'm just going to use First of all, the Rectangle tool, and I'm going to establish an area on the bottom of the frame that I'm going to use for my lower third. This is a solid. I don't want it to be solid. I want it to have a little gradient on the end. So over here in the Properties, I can select this drop-down and go Linear Gradient. I don't like the color, so I'm going to change the stop color, and I'm just going to grab a blue that's maybe a little more in here. If I had a specific number, I could enter those. But you'll notice that this is just a blue to white, and that's not what I want. So let's take it blue to blue, and I want my opacity to be zero. You'll notice that I've added this gradient by selecting, I'm talking to this one, the opacity is zero. This just fades off to nothing. But that's not the angle. I want it to be at the end. So I can change the angle by rotating this. And in this case, I'm going to want it to be 270. And I can adjust how narrow or sharp it is by using the gradient stops. And now I have a lower third that I can position. And if I need to extend it for some reason, because somebody's got a, a title or uh, that's extra long, if I need to shorten it, I can just grab the bounding box here at the end, this little box here, and I can stretch it longer or shorter even after I've created my template. So let's put it about the middle of the frame. And so now we've got our blue to nothing and our opacity set, and we are good to go. I can also, if I want to, adjust the opacity of the uh, uh, other color so that it has some transparency to it. I could say I want it to be at 90%. Helps it to look maybe a little more dressed. But I want a logo as part of this. I want a company logo. So I'm going to go to the selection tool and I'm going to touch anywhere in the video screen here. And then I'm going to right click on it and go to graphic, insert graphic, and now I can insert a ping. If I have a graphic where I want a video to shine through it, I can add a, a JPEG. In this case, I have a ping file with a bug that's been sized. I can select it, press open, and it appears. And I can position this uh, wherever I want it. So let's just put it here on the end. And now I've got a basic bar logo. I may make it higher or lower. Once I start putting text in, I may fine tune it a little bit. But this is a good starting point. Next is text. I want to put text in here, uh, text with all of the properties of my basic template, so that in the future all I need to do is replace the old text with my new text, and it will look exactly the same as the others. So to add text, I'm going to press the T over here in my Tools window. I'm going to open the Type tool, and I'm going to draw a box. Well. When I go to create my text, it's going to use the properties of the last thing I created, which was my gradient lower third. So if I type Bob Smith, you'll see that it has this 
gradient that is somewhat similar to this, and that's not what I want. I can select the box and change the properties, which is probably the fastest way, and I'm going to go from linear gradient back to solid, and I'm going to change the color to white, because that's the color I want. And lastly, I want to change the font. Instead of Adobe Arabic, I would like to move it over to Arial. And here we have Arial. And rather than narrow, let's go bold and adjust my text. Now currently that text is pretty big, so I can adjust the size here in the window by clicking on it and moving left and right, or I can click on it and type in a number. So in this case, let's say 75% is where I want to be. Again, I can adjust it. You'll see this region, this line here at the bottom, indicates the bottom of that text window. And so I'm going to size my window just a little so that I can have it where I want it to be. Now, here we have a name. Now I'd like to add a title and I'm going to draw another text window. I could do it over the uh, gradient, but I do it here because it's easier for me to manipulate. And Bob Smith is the uh, big cheese and CEO. Select it, and I can now move it into position. But I'd like the properties of this one to be different than the Arial Bold. Let's say I want to use Arial regular. And I want to use small caps. I'm going to select here. And I can change the size of the small caps by clicking on it. I can go 85. And again, I can change the size to um, get it closer to what I'm after. Scaling the box. And by clicking on the text, I can get it close. Now, I don't have to get it exactly right, because if I select my bottom text window and shift-click on the top text window, I can use the alignment tools, and I can click on horizontal left, and now they're both aligned. And I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move them up and down or to position them individually. And now I have this lower third. Let's say that's what we're after, and that's where we want everything to be. And we want to save this as a template. Well, in the text, in the title tool, you'll notice there's a window up here, a little icon up here, called Templates. By selecting it, it opens up previous templates that I've created. And I want to create a template from what I've got. It's none of these. Well, in the window over here, if I select this, I can import current title as a template. I can use all the work I did for that graphic and create a template from it. And I can call it base lower third. It's got the same name as what I created for my uh, original title. I'll select OK. And there it is. And we're good to go. Now I have a template. I'll close this out. But I can also create a new graphic using this uh, template that we just created. So if I go Title, New Title, and instead of going Default Still, if I go Based on Template, I can go Base Lower Third. Here's the Base Lower Third I just created. I'll select OK. And there's all the work we've done. And now I can select Bob Smith. And let's say that it's really Sam Cook. And he is, he is the medium cheese. And he is the CFO. Closing the window automatically saves the new title. And now when I drop the new title on, you'll see that we now have Sam Cook Medium Cheese CFO, and it matches the same format that we had used before. Bob Smith, Sam Cook, 
and you'll see that we now have a template that we can leverage over and over again with the graphic that we like to use. Creating title templates in Premiere Pro is a huge savings of time, particularly if all of your work is taking place on the same computer. But what if you want to move that template? What if you want to share it with somebody else who's working on similar projects? Or what if you want to send it across the country? You can do it. It takes a little bit of work, but it's certainly possible. Those templates are saved in a directory associated with my Creative Cloud. So in this case, it's on my C drive of my computer, Users, True, Documents, Adobe, Premiere Pro, 9.0. And what I searched for was Profile Creative Cloud. And I need the directory that's inside there. So using this path, I have opened up that window. And you can see here is the lower third template that we created. I want to copy it, not move it. So Control C. And in this case, I'm just going to move it onto my desktop. So I have copied it onto my desktop. Now, closing these windows out, when I'm in a project, I can simply File, Import, Base Lower Third, Open, and it imports that uh, graphic. But we have an error message. It goes, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I don't have the graphic that was used in this. Where is it? I can locate that graphic, which I happen to know is in a folder there. And now that graphic has been recreated. So not only do I move the template, I need to make certain I've also moved any other assets that have been associated with that template. I now have this lower third. And if I want to save it on, as a template on my computer, I can double click it, go back again, and I'll use the drop down menu to import current title as a template, base lower third two, OK. And now we have that title as a template, and we can use it again in the future. So hopefully this helps you in the process of creating templates that you can use over and over again.